Hi, my name's Andy, and this is uh, the story of how I wrote a snake game in Ruby. First thing I think I'll do is I'll prove to you that I really wrote a snake game in Ruby. So here it is. I'll play it for you if you like. So, you're a snake. You can eat apples. You get a score. You die when you crash. Uh, and just in case you weren't convinced, I'm just going to show you a bit of the program. Um, so, uh, if you know any Python, you'll think that some of this looks familiar to you from Python. Um, but as you look a bit closer, you'll notice a distinct lack of brackets and lack of colons at the end of lines. Uh, we can really see a few nice little features uh, here, like the actor access thing, which doesn't automatically create properties for you. I'll talk about that a bit. Uh, this is how you refer to a member variable with the at before it. Um, the construction constructor function of an object is called initialize. Um, construction method, I mean. Um, it, this is a way you can iterate. Uh, this is a block of code. You can give anything, any block of code to one of these. Uh, other nice bits and bobs that we'll get into. So this is this is code that you, you ought to be able to read. Um, uh, create a new window, set its title, and so on. And then when you connect a signal, you can pass just any odd block of code that gets um, run when that signal um, happens using this do end thing that makes a block of code that you can pass around. Uh, and you can also do cleverer stuff like um, this block of code, which actually takes some named arguments. So this is the, the nicest, most beautiful thing about Ruby. I'll get into that in a bit. I think that's all I've got to show you for now, but we'll come back to this if I want to talk a bit more about any examples. Okay, so uh, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about um, a bit about uh, why why write Snake uh, uh, to find out about programming language, um, talk a bit about what Ruby is. Um, we're going to talk about how to make functions and classes, how to do basic uh, flow control if and, and stuff like that, uh, what a block is and how great they are, some of the little bits of syntactic sugar you get in Ruby, um, and some of the things that I found slightly wrinklish um, about Ruby. I'm going to mention a few other features I don't have time for, and then uh, where you can find out more. Um, I should mention at this point, um, my experience in Ruby is very limited. Um, I've only written a couple of programs in it, so this is really the impressions of someone who's um, uh, coming to the language for the first time and finding out how they feel about it. So first of all, uh, why Snake? Well, because Snake is cool, it's a fun game, uh, but also it's an easy challenge for me to uh, to write Snake in a language that's unfamiliar, um, but it does require exercising some of the stuff you're going to need when you write real programs, including um, awkward stuff like user interfaces and interacting with the user, um, and basic stuff like arrays and loops. Okay, so what is Ruby? Well, it is something that has been grouped into this group of languages called scripting languages, which is a silly uh, grouping, uh, but it is uh, it does act as if it's interpreted at runtime. It does the same thing as stuff like Python, where it kind of compiles itself and runs itself all in one go, so it acts like it's interpreted, and what it compiles into is a, a, a runtime a bytecode, um, similar, very similar to Python. Um, it has dynamic types, uh, so you don't declare the types of variables. Um, it has been used for some major um, important stuff, including stuff that performs pretty well, uh, uh, like the GitHub website runs on Ruby, and lots of other trendy new websites. Um, if you're familiar with Python, which I am, uh, Ruby will look like Python when you first come to it, but with some odd stuff like uh, a lot fewer brackets and dots. Um, oh and the great thing about Python, about Ruby, one of the one of the great things about Ruby, is that um, code blocks are first-class citizens. You can pass a bit of code as an argument to a function in a really nice way. So that's something that you might refer to as lambda functions um, in other environments, but they're so native to Ruby that um, they're just called blocks. Uh, and that is great. 
And why would you want to know about Ruby? Well, because everyone who's uh, cool enough is writing their new exciting cloud-based web apps in something called Ruby on Rails, which is a way of getting up and running very quickly with um, a web application. Uh, and that's all, that's all Ruby. Okay, so how do you do stuff? Well, you can make functions. Uh, often you don't need to use brackets either to define them or call them. You also don't need to use um, the return keyword uh, if you don't want to. The last line, the last expression in a function will be returned from it. Um, so to define a function, you start it off with a def uh, and then you end it with an end and that x plus y will get implicitly will be treated as the return value of the function. Um, other things you can do, um, define classes. So um, this is how you define a class. Uh, this attra accessor thing at the top, what that actually does is creates a member variable called grid size and also creates functions to uh, set and get the value of that member variable without you having to write them yourself. And then later on, if you change your mind about um, you want to do something clever when they get um, set or got, you can just put the function in instead of that attra accessor. Um, you can also have read-only functions yeah, using a different accessor, a different ATRA uh, declaration. Um, and then you you have a constructor by writing a, a method called initialize. Um, and uh, when you talk about member variables, you use an at before their name. Um, so that, that initialize function is setting grid size to this um, value that came in called grid size. Okay, so uh, more about classes. You can create a class by calling class name, class name dot new, which is something that I always felt would be the right way to uh, define a constructor that you sort of think of a, think of, or not a constructor, think of creating a new instance of a class as kind of a static class, a static method on that class, because you're, you're kind of doing something with that class. Uh, so I think that it fits with the way I think about making a new one of those things. Uh, you can put the brackets if you want. That's what I'm saying at the bottom there. Okay, how, how does flow control? Well, things like if, uh, remarkably, there's another version of, um, the, of else if that's different from C uh, and also different from Python's weird elif thing. Don't ask me why else if, uh, but that's what it is. Um, notice that there's no colons at the end of lines like you have in Python. Uh, and yes, uh, line endings are significant in Ruby, and we'll get on to that. So the 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 condition of the if ends because there's a line ending, and then you've got um, indented uh, code for what to do in that condition. You can use the word or, which is rather nice. Um, and you end your if by putting end on its own line. So um, not a kind of implicit end to the if by writing some more code, which is what you would have in Python. Um, yeah, this, uh, this explicit end of an if because there's an end, the word end. Um, you can also do all this on one line. Uh, and when you do that, you need the word then there to tell it to start. Um, stop being a condition and start being what you do. Uh, you can have for loops, but this is not the way you would normally do it. Um, and uh, those for loops can loop through ranges, and in this case, one dot dot three is a range uh, inclusive range one two three. By the way, uh, the way you print something is put s, which is um, would be familiar to you if you know any C, but um, in this day and age, most people call that print, which would be nice, I think. Uh, okay, so we get onto some of the more interesting stuff. Um, Ruby has this thing called a block, and we've already seen some blocks. Um, basically, they're bits of code uh, that you pass as arguments to functions or methods. Um, but when you're writing Ruby code, you're doing this all the time, <clears throat> or you're doing something that looks like this uh, all the time, or both. Uh, and that's what I really like about it, that this, this idea of passing code to a method or a function is not some special thing you do when you're doing something ultra clever. It's something that you do all the time. 
Um, and I think that's the right way of thinking about various things. So, uh, it's really good. And the syntax for it is really good. I particularly respect the syntax for it because um, I've been thinking for a long time about how I would design a programming language. And I've gone through all kinds of different iterations of how to define the syntax for this kind of thing before reading any Ruby code. And when I came to Ruby, it was like a light bulb turning on. Uh, the way of uh, defining the syntax is just so simple, but it, it covers what you need. So here's an example. Um, uh, there are two ways of, of two syntaxes for defining a block. One is this curly bracket one. So here, um, the number five is an object. Everything in Ruby is an object. And it has a method on it called times. And that method takes one argument, which is what to do five times or however many times. Uh, so times means loop, loop through this, uh, from, from zero up to one less than this number, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then we're passing one function to that method, which is a block of code. And this block of code, what, what it does is this is an example from my snake game. Uh, it, it, it adds something onto this snake body array. Uh, but the point is that block of code is being passed as an argument to a function called times or a method called times uh, and it gets executed five times uh, and then here's another example so in this case we're we're handling an event so the event this is this is all I, th this snack game is written in uh, gtk on top of ruby um, so the event is a, a key press event and uh, we we ba this connect method basically means um, uh, uh, this is what to do when you press a key and, and what, the way we tell it what to do is we pass it a code block and in in some other languages you might have to do something horrific like pass it an object that implements an interface called on event or whatever or on key press. Um, in Ruby, you just write the code as you would sort of say it, which is when you press a key, do this thing. And the other thing to mention about this, um, these code blocks is that they can take named arguments like a widget and event here. Um, those are arguments that we know the key press event will give to us when it runs this block of code. So this is genuinely like an anonymous function or a lambda function. Um, but the syntax for it is so natural that it almost looks like it's you're, right, you're just writing the code in a straightforward way. What you're actually doing is passing this block in, which is brilliant because you can write your own code um, in the same way. And you can have um, something that you want to do, but, and you need, and you run a certain piece of code a certain number of times with a certain number of conditions, and it's natural syntax for it. Uh, okay, so things that you get in that are just syntactic sugar, but are, are nice or not so nice. Uh, one dot dot three uh, is an inclusive range, so that will include one, two, and three. Whereas triple dots is an exclusive range. Whether you think this is good or bad, I guess it's a matter of opinion. To me, it's. I mean, I guess once you know it, it it's fairly easy to read. But um, before you know it, I'm not sure I would have ha I've been able to hazard a guess about what the difference between those two types of range was. Uh, something that I really like is the splat operator. Uh, so called, which means that you can take um, an array and turn it into the arguments that get passed into a function. So this rectangle method takes four arguments. We're giving it zero and zero, and then we're giving it two more arguments, um, which have been splatted from this array. That's great. That makes it really easy to pass around things that you're then going to later use as arguments. Uh, we've already seen uh, a bit of how this works, but you can do, um, you can iterate through stuff, not just with that five dot times thing, but you can, uh, there's an each method on an array, which means um, do this thing to every thing in the array. Um, and it, it takes in, it can, uh, it, 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 it takes an argument, which is this pause thing, that's, that's, that's what the vertical lines mean, that these are the arguments for this code block. So it takes, um, the each method will give you this argument, which is the thing in in the array that you're currently looking at, and you can use it in your code block. Um, other bits and bobs. Um, the this the case statement is exactly a switch statement from other languages. Just maybe not exactly. It's pretty close to what you'd expect. Um, 
uh, from a switch statement in other languages. Difference being uh, these these things after when don't necessarily have to be exactly equal to the um, to what's in snake dir. They could they can be kind of classes of things that kind of match what it is. Um, so potentially more flexible, almost uh, the shadows of some of the kind of matcher stuff that you would get in Haskell or something cool like that. Um, things that I find surprising or or, or strike me as possible potential problems. Um, the biggest one is also one of the things that makes Ruby very nice and easy to read, um, which is that a new line uh, it, it's used as part of the important, um, it, it's a significant part of the syntax. Um, so if you hit a new line when it could be the end of what you're doing, then it's treated as the end of what you're doing. If you want to be absolutely explicit, you can put a semicolon, then it knows that this is the end of the expression or that statement. Um, uh, so that's the only white space that's significant in Ruby, but it does mean, um, just like in JavaScript, which has been absolutely panned for this problem, um, if you write return A, that means you're going to return A, and if you write return new line A, then it returns absolutely nothing. Um, and then A is just treated as a statement on the next line, which isn't executed because you've returned. So, um, yeah, I guess... I've got used to this in JavaScript actually and you can avoid it but I still think it's it's a scary fact um, by the way if I'm wrong about this please correct me in the comments uh, okay other things uh, other things that are wrinkles um, the keyword do starts a block um, uh, a code block which you, for example, could pass to a function or do something else with. Uh, but there are places where you can use the keyword do, where you're not technically starting a block. So, for example, if you, you if you make a for loop, um, it looks a bit like you're making a block, and you can put the keyword do in there if you want to. Um, and because a for loop is doing a similar thing to something like an each or a times, five dot times or whatever, it feels like it would be a block. Actually, it's not a block. I, probably, I guess that's for performance reasons, I don't know. Um, what that means is that there are different rules for the variable scope. Um, I'm pretty sure in a block you're uh, you're in a different scope, whereas if you're inside a, um, a for loop, you, you're not in a different scope, so you can modify um, variables that are outside the for loop. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I meant when I wrote that. Um, yeah, other things... Um, you can do op operator overloading, and the operators are actually methods on objects, um, which is okay so long as they're symmetrical and a bit tricky if they're not. And that, uh, you get that in other languages, not that unusual. Um, other things that are slightly odd: a, if you have a variable whose first letter is a capital letter, that magically makes it into a constant. And again, you know, once you know that, it's not too bad. But I mean, I guess it's better, better than the kind of shouting that you get in some languages for, like C for um, preprocessor defines. But uh, yeah, I, it's a convention, but it's a convention that's enforced in the code, which is surprising. But uh, it's a very low noise. Once you know it, it's a very low noise way of being able to recognize constants. Um, other stuff in Ruby that I don't have time to talk about. Um, uh, something I really like is you can refer to symbols uh, directly by just putting colon and then that symbol. So in, um, instead of talking about the contents of a variable called name, if you want to talk about the name of a variable called name, you write colon name. Uh, you can do operator overloading, as I mentioned, because operators are just methods. Uh, every, uh, everything's an expression, including, um, for example, an if statement, which is great, because that's the way things should be. In fact, preferably every method should be only one expression, just like in uh, uh, functional, you know, in the functional style. Um, uh, there is built-in syntax for regular expressions, like in Perl. It's very similar to in Perl, as far as I can see. Um, 
which is nice because if you have regular expressions in a language like Java, you've got backslashes all over the place. However, um, Python has shown that you can make it reasonably easy to write regular expressions without needing a special syntax for them. So feel a bit ambivalent about that. Uh, namespaces, uh, there's a few of them in, in the snake example. That basically, you can get inside a namespace using colon colon. There is also a triple equal operator, which I assumed meant um, is the same reference as, and actually means nothing like that. It means uh, is in the class of, so, so uh, left and right. You can't swap left and right and have it still be true. It's not a commutative operator. The left-hand thing is the class of stuff, and the right-hand thing may or may not be one instance of that class. I, by class, I don't mean our class in object-oriented sense. I mean a group of things. So, for example, you might have an a, array of stuff on the left, uh, and then equals, 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 and then an item of the array. That would come out as true, because the thing on the right is kind of a member of the thing on the left, uh, which is very surprising to me. Uh, other features... Uh, you can do all kinds of cool functional stuff using methods like take and zip and reduce and map, which do what you um, would expect uh, if you've done any functional type stuff. Uh, you've got complete introspection. You've got really cool stuff like um, yeah, classes and methods are, um, are modifiable. And, you can, and in fact, again, one of the things that Ruby does really nicely is that this kind of metaprogramming type stuff is a, a core part of the language. So the actor accessor thing that we saw earlier what you're actually doing there is calling a method on the object during its construction, and that method modifies the definition of the... Sorry, not during its construction, during its uh, what its definition, or its declaration. But actually, it's not a declaration, it's a, it's running some code. Uh, so when you do an actual accessor, you're modifying the definition of the class during uh, the sort of execution of its declaration. If that made any sense to you, well done. Uh, you have an interactive environment, but it's not, you don't get into it by just typing Ruby, which was a surprise to me. You have to type IRB for interactive Ruby, I guess, or something. Uh, but anyway, once you're in there, um, you can run Ruby commands and import stuff and interact with it, which is beautiful. Um, multi line comments are defined with an equals begin and then an equals end. Um, and you can have statement modifiers, which means you can put the word if after the thing you want to do. So you could say, uh, you know, increment x if a is greater than 2, rather than putting if a is greater than 2, increment x, uh, which is a thing that I saw in Perl and was never convinced that it was anything other than confusing. It's supposed to be more expressive. It is more expressive. You can express yourself in different ways. And I tend to think that being able to say the same thing in different ways is generally a bad thing which means the Perl people disagree with me. Uh, it also has a yield keyword, which uh, is makes a, makes it really nice and easy to create iterators, which is brilliant. Um, you can break out of things, even things that you would be surprised you could break out of. So uh, five dot times, for example, the, this method, um, if one of the... Um, uh, it, one of the executions of the block you passed says you should break, then it will stop iterating uh, part way through. So that, that's, uh, again, you just write the code in it and you would obviously expect it to work. And then when you think about what it actually what it actually means, it's surprising that it works. But normally you don't have to think about it and it just works. So great. Um, and that's it for um, Snake in Ruby. Um, uh, I'm going to be looking at a few other languages um, and trying to write snake in them and reporting back on my progress. Um, if you'd like to find out more, there's a few links on here. Um, I've started a new page on Patreon, which is a, um, uh, a system whereby you can support me by donating small amounts of money, like uh, uh, $1 every time I bring out uh, a new video or something like that. And since I do them fairly infrequently that shouldn't cost you too much you can also set a limit on patreon about uh, for how much per month so if i suddenly brought out loads of videos in a month you could have a limit saying well i still only want to give him one dollar or whatever so um you're welcome to watch these videos without ever doing that uh, but if you're interested in encouraging me to make more videos um, uh, please have a look on patreon i'll just show you what the page looks like so this is what the page looks like if you have a look on the left hand there if you um, choose 
uh, how much money you want me to get from uh, uh, from you for making a video click on that become a patron button uh, you can find all my videos on patreon they're all um it's the same videos that are on youtube you're welcome to watch them on youtube if you want to support me uh, please have a look on patreon it, um, hopefully it's a cool way for people to um, get a little bit of financial support for um, doing stuff like this uh, yeah uh, so you can see the videos on patreon you can see them on youtube um, you can follow me on twitter um, you can uh, have a look on my blog I, I tend to write about whatever problems i'm having and how i manage to solve them or not in various programming tasks i also put all the videos and stuff uh, on the blog uh, and I have a look at uh, my open source projects on artificialworlds.net uh, especially check out my new game which is called Rabbitscape uh, there's an Android version out now um, and see you next time